I raised my nephew as my own son because my sister didn't want him. Now her daughter is jealous of her brother because they're turbo poor. When I was 18 and my sister was 22, she became pregnant with my nephew Luke. My sister and her then-boyfriend, who was now her husband, didn't show any interest in Luke when he was born, so I took on the role of caring for him. I enlisted the help of my grandmother, who was a tremendous support and an angel, and she watched over him while I was in my last year of high school in exchange for me cleaning and cooking for her on the weekends. My parents weren't much help either. They would give me about $100 a month for Luke, and if you have a kid, then you know it's not much, so my grandmother and I were the only ones taking care of him. A year after I graduated from high school, I was kicked out with my nephew because my parents, sister, and her husband didn't want to deal with us anymore. My sister said she wished she had never given birth to him. I immediately went to my grandmother, and we visited a family law attorney. I obtained custody of him, and my sister and her husband signed their rights to me, so I will be calling Luke my son instead of my nephew. From then on, I lived with my grandmother, and while I attended community college and worked part-time, she looked after my son. It was a lot of work, especially when my grandmother passed away when Luke was six. In her will, my grandmother left 90% of her things to me. This event prompted my parents and sister to reach out to me under false pretenses to reconnect and meet my son. However, the reunion didn't last long, and I made it clear to them that they could either behave appropriately or never see us again. My dad chose to genuinely reconnect with my son and me, and now we're close. On the other hand, my mom and I don't talk much, but she treats Luke kindly. When Luke was eight, both my sister and I became pregnant. That's when my sister decided she wanted my son back and started telling him that my husband and I wouldn't love him anymore once my, in her words, actual son arrived. For context, my husband met Luke when he was five, and we were already together for a year before that meeting. My husband treats Luke like his own, and we got married when my son was seven. We adopted him when he was nine, with his permission. We discovered that my sister was spreading these hurtful ideas when Luke broke down crying one day, expressing fear that we would abandon him once his younger brother was born. He explained what my sister and her husband had been saying, and we reassured him that it would never happen. Luke knows he's not my biological son, but he is undoubtedly my son. After that, I cut contact with my sister and her husband again and pursued family and individual therapy for my son. When I finally gave birth to his younger brother, I made it clear to Luke that our love for him hadn't changed. About two years later, when my sister reached out, I decided to go low contact with her, with the approval of my son and husband. My husband and I live comfortably, while my sister and her husband sometimes struggle financially. My kids engage in extracurricular activities, receive the presents they desire, and go on a big family trip every summer. Meanwhile, my sister and her husband can't afford much. When my niece was around nine, my sister began making comments about how I needed to pay for this or that for my niece, and I told her it wasn't my responsibility. Although I gave my niece the gifts she wanted and took her out from time to time, it wasn't even close to how I treated my own kids. Now, my second son is turning 17, and my husband and I were discussing getting him an affordable starter car, just as we did for Luke when he turned 17. Simultaneously, my niece is also turning 17, and apparently my sister told her she would get her a car. However, my sister can't afford to buy her one, so she asked me to do so. I refused, explaining that I hadn't promised her a car, and it's not my responsibility to provide one. My sister got upset and didn't talk to me for a while after that. When my son's 17th birthday arrived, we surprised him with a car. A couple of days later, my niece called me, screaming and crying, asking why I hate her and why I can't treat her the same as her brother. Calmly, I explained that things were different, that her brother is my son, and while she is my niece, I can't buy her the same things as my son. I clarified that as an aunt, my role involves birthday presents, Christmas presents, and showing up when it matters, nothing more. I emphasize that her brother will always mean more to me than she ever will.
Despite my calm explanation, my niece continued yelling and accused me of being unfair before hanging up. Subsequently, my sister called to berate me about doing more. I pointed out that if she hadn't promised a car or my money to my niece, none of this would have happened. It's been a couple of days, and I'm receiving calls from some family and some of my sister's friends, calling me nasty names and some other things. I do feel a sense of guilt because my kids did grow up with more, and I suppose I could have helped more. So, am I the jerk for what I said to my niece? Update. To get some names in order, I will be addressing my niece as Emily, and my youngest son is Justin. Two days after Emily's call, I decided to meet up with her. We decided to meet at a park that's a few minutes away from my home. When we met, Emily seemed normal but a little bit tired. I told her I didn't mean to hurt her in any way, but she needs to understand it's not my job because I'm not her parent. She said she understood that, but she was jealous that her brother and Justin got everything they wanted. I told her that first. Luke isn't her brother, but her cousin because of how things happened. Second of all, they don't get everything they want. They work for it. They get good grades, do chores, and stay out of trouble for the most part. I then asked her the real reason for why she was acting this way, as she never had a problem before this. She started crying saying it wasn't fair that Luke and Justin get everything they want while she gets barely anything. She claimed that Luke lucked out in life by being adopted by my husband and me. She asserted that she deserves to have what my sons have, and that is family. I have to take care of her too. I told her that she is part of my family, but not my child. I do love her, but she's not my responsibility. I then asked her why she feels so strongly about it. She said that even though her parents take good care of her, she feels like she's just an obligation to them. When she sees how Luke and Justin were raised, she gets jealous because, in her eyes, we don't view the boys as an obligation. According to her, we are a family that's always together, always works through problems, and helps each other. Even though I stayed in her life and took her out with my family, she always felt jealous that she had to be the one to leave. She felt second place and believed that since I took in Luke, I should take her in too with no problem. I told her that while I understand her feelings, I'm not going to treat her as my kid. I didn't raise her, but I do love her. It's her parents' job to get her a car or to help her get one. She got more upset, saying that I clearly don't care about her, and she left. I texted her, saying that I do care for her, but I'm not her mom, and it's not my job. After I got home, my husband and I talked, and we decided to call my sister. I told her that my family and I are going full, no contact. My sister then asked about how I'm going to get in contact with Emily. I told her Emily is almost an adult. She can contact me if she wants. She then asked me if I was going to get Emily a car. I said no and told her that it's her job, that she's her mother and needs to act like it. Emily needs her to be a mom, and I hung up the phone, blocked, and deleted her number. The next day, I got a call from my mom. She believes that I should give Emily some money for a car if I won't give her one. I told her I wasn't going to do that and hung up because all it's going to do is cause a fight. I then called dad and explained everything, and he thinks I'm right. Later, my dad called, asking if he could come over on Wednesday. When he showed up, he was visibly upset. Mom gave a big chunk of money out of my parents' retirement fund to my sister. This has caused my parents to have a huge fight, which led my dad to pack a suitcase and stay in a motel for a bit. Now, I'm no contact with my sister and mom, and I'll be going low contact with my niece for now. Update. About a week after the post, I decided to talk to Emily, and we agreed to meet at my home. I asked everyone not to be home, because I wanted her and me to talk privately. When she showed up, she didn't really want to look at me, and I asked her if I could give her a hug. She nodded her head, and the minute I hugged her, she cried. She said she was sorry for how she acted, and I told her she didn't need to apologize. I asked her about how her parents treat her again to understand more about what's going on. She told me that her dad treats her well and tries to spend time with her, but he's busy because he works two jobs. While my sister is home more, she usually just keeps to herself and doesn't really like to be bugged. I then asked her if she feels like she's been neglected. She said no. Just sometimes they don't have family time that much because her parents argue a lot, especially about money. Sometimes her mom does make her feel like an obligation, but she knows that they do love her. 
I brought up her referring to Luke as her brother and asked if she truly felt that way about him. She explained that she sees him as a cousin, but thought that if she played the brother card, I might feel inclined to help her. So I asked her if she knew how I ended up adopting Luke, and she confirmed that she knew, and that her dad had explained what happened. Apparently, my sister Sugar coded it, whereas her dad told her the blunt truth, the complete truth. I then asked her if she would like to spend a fun day out with me on Saturdays. She got excited and expressed that she would really like that. So that weekend, we visited a restaurant she had been wanting to try, had a good time, and then went to a bookstore because she loves to read, and I bought her a couple of books that she wanted. When Emily and I were supposed to have our second weekend out, I had to cancel because Justin ended up in the hospital. While at football practice, he got tackled, which knocked the wind out of him and caused a bad asthma attack. This happened on a Friday, and Justin stayed at the hospital until Sunday. Emily and I were supposed to go out on Saturday, and that morning I called her and told her I had to cancel. Before I could tell her why, she started yelling at me, saying I never cared about her and hung up the phone. I tried calling her back, but it went straight to voicemail. Then I sent her a text saying that I didn't mean to hurt her, but Justin was in the hospital, and that we can have our day next weekend, but I never heard back from her. Two days ago, my family and I were out for a family night when my neighbors called, saying that they called the cops because someone was vandalizing one of our cars. When we got home, the cops were there, and it was Justin's car. The car had scratches, little dents, paint, and there were two broken windows. My husband and I checked our security footage, and you could clearly see Emily and someone else vandalizing the car. My husband gave the video copy to the police, and Emily and her friend got arrested the next morning. My sister and mom came to my house, screaming that I was ruining my niece's life, and if I loved her, I would drop the charges. My husband is adamant that we don't drop the charges, and Justin and Luke agree with my husband. So that's where we stand now.